In early June, Roger was able to return Alex's visit. By now, they were both in the Western Desert. Alex's unit was close enough to make a quick trip by car. The catch was that Roger didn't have a car, and nobody was prepared to lend him one. The only vehicle in sight was the Colonel's limousine, standing in front of his empty tent. It was a highly polished Rolls Royce, which the old man had used in Cairo. It had a silver spear that stuck out in front. What could be easier than borrowing it? Roger thought. The dry old stick is away overnight, and we'll never know. The colonel's driver had orders not to let anybody touch the car, but after much persuasion and a certain consideration, Roger was shown where the keys were kept. It was an easy trip, and he and Alex had a wonderful reunion. So much so that his friend would not hear of Roger leaving when the time came to part. The colour was leaving the sky when Roger finally got away. With dimmed car lights and no moon, and the fear of landmines, he found the return journey nerve-wracking. He could just see far enough to avoid crashing into boulders. The darker it got, the slower his progress. Having slid and skidded to the bottom of a wadi, Roger had difficulty getting out at the other side. The steep incline was full of scree. The car groaned and wobbled as it fought its way up the hill. He feared it might roll back. Instead, the wheels suddenly gripped and hurled him into an object. Thrown heavily against the windscreen, he cut his face. The obstacle proved to be a stray camel making its solitary way up the hill in front of him in the dark. By the time he had recovered, the animal was sitting on the car bonnet, lashing the vehicle to bits. The demented creature seemed malicious about it. Roger stared disbelievingly at the mountain of flesh pressed against the windscreen. Because of the car's silver spear, car and camel had become inseparably attached. The camel's screams confirmed it. In desperation, Roger put his hand on the horn. With a wrench, the camel lunged forward into the black night. He sat there trembling, still gripping the steering wheel. He was convinced that the frenzied beast would not stop running until it had reached the coast of Morocco and fallen into the sea. Several hours later, chilled to the bone, he rattled back to camp. With nowhere better to put the car, Roger left it in front of the colonel's tent. He never recovered from the shock of seeing his vehicle the next morning.